let's go ahead and nip this in the bud right now. I'm gonna say pipe, and I'm gonna say conduit, and I'm gonna say EMT, I'm gonna say all that throughout the video. Now, some people say, well, if you don't know what you're talking about, you shouldn't be talking about it. Well, I, I say pipe, EMT, it doesn't matter. It's the same damn thing. It's going on the wall, stuff's going in it. So I'm gonna say whatever I want to. So I hope that doesn't offend anybody, but that's just me. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I've got a video that has been asked many years. I've been saying I'm gonna do it. So today, I'm going to do a video and I'm not sure if I'm going to do it in segments to make it shorter or make it um, all in one and make it long. I think what I like to do is to do it in segments. So in other words, I'll have uh, probably four or five different episodes on this. Now, the first one we're going to do is we are going to talk about 10 degree bending. So there's a lot of thought process you got to do as an electrician. Now, what you need to think about uh, when you decide if you have obstructions or you have just things in the way that you have to get over or maybe there's another bend or whatever, you need to figure out what degrees of bending you're going to do. Now I say that because uh, a lot of people say to me in my comments and they've emailed me and I've actually talked to a few people um, and they said, I don't understand how do you know should I bend it on a 10? Should I bend it on a uh, 22 and a half. Should I bend it on a 30? Should I bend it on a 45 or a 60 or whatever? Now, let's talk about, now this is going to be a semi-talking video, so if this doesn't interest you guys, uh, I'm sorry, but this is something that has been asked so many times that I have to make a video like this with the talking points. So if it you don't want to watch it, then I may be able to leave some timestamps down below so you can just jump by, but we need to talk about the different degrees. And I'm gonna show you uh, from, we're, go, we're gonna stick with the four inch offset on all this, on all episodes. So it'll be four inches, no matter what, no matter whether I do it here, or I take it out on my building outside, or my block wall, or wherever. So 10 degrees. Now, if you have as much room as you want, and there's nothing else going there, and there's nothing in the way, you're pretty much just gonna run that one pipe, or, and I, let's go ahead and nip this in the bud right now. I'm gonna say pipe, and I'm gonna say conduit, I'm gonna say EMT, I'm gonna say all that throughout the video. Now, some people say, well, if you don't know what you're talking about, you shouldn't be talking about it. Well, I, I say pipe, EMT, it doesn't matter, it's the same damn thing. It's going on the wall, stuff's going in it, so I'm gonna say whatever I want to, so I hope that doesn't offend anybody, but that's just me. So, if you have the ultimate wall and there's nothing in the way all right and you have a four inch offset the less the least amount of bends in a conduit the better because the more bends you put in the more resistance there is obviously right but you know that just depends i mean do you want it to look you know funky because if you have if you have like a 10 inch offset and you use it on 10 degrees well you're going to have a really 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 long offset so you kind of got to think in your head, all right, you know, being an electrician, help or apprentice, whatever you want to call it, you know, you've got a lot of thought process going on. You've got to think, you know, a lot of the times, most journeymen will say, bend me on a 30, bend me on a 45 or whatever, you know, or I don't have much space. I only have seven inches to get in to this. How can we make this work? You know, luckily for me, when I first started, I had the greatest, I would say, bender person I've ever met. You know, he showed me. And then he let me roll and it was just one after the next. So, um, you know, he showed me a lot of stuff. We talked about a lot of stuff and a lot of it's common sense. So if you don't care about how much you have, how much space you have, then you're fine. You can use a 10 inch offset, but that's what we're going to work with today. We're going to show you how to bend a 10 degree offset. And I'm also going to show you this right here. This is a brand new bender. It's got, it's a Klein and it's got the little, uh, I guess you would call it, what is that called? A helper or whatever? Uh, angle setter. So you know, you drop it in here and you'll have your 10 degrees. Right in the shoe is, it's got notches. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got notches and that right here fits in those notches. So you get the same degree bends all the time. Is that the best way to do it? I don't know, it all depends. I've never used it yet. It's literally brand new. I know it looks like hell. It's been in the back of a truck, but we're going to use it today. We're going to see. I don't know how good it is, but um, I'll leave links to benders down below that I know that I like. 
Uh, hopefully this will prove to be a good item. Let's go ahead and talk about the 10 degree. I probably said 10 inch, right? Because I'm thinking whatever reason I said 10 inch, but 10 degree offset. What is the multiplier? <laughs> what is the multiplier? That was funny, right? Multiplier uh, on a 10 degree. All right, I'm gonna give you a few seconds. You tell me what you think it is. Oh, did you figure it out? Well, it's uh, what? Yes, it's six. All right, so the multiplier is six, right? And I, it's crazy how I look at this app right here. Oh, it's not gonna go, there it goes. And it's gonna show me that number. Now I went to a different app. See if I can still have that pulled up. Yeah, and it shows me that. But anyway, six times four is 24. We're gonna go with the tried and true method of the old people like me. And we're gonna figure out how this goes. Now, I got about a five foot piece of conduit here and what we need to do is we need to figure out a spot to start at. Now, I like to come back, you know, I say different things in different videos. About two inches is where I like to go. I'll put my first mark. And then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come 24 inches, right, past that mark. So we'll put a mark here, two inches, and we'll put the tape measure at this mark. Let's, let's just say this was two inches, and we'll pull 24 inches, and then we'll bend it at 10 degrees, all right? What we're gonna do, like I mentioned, this is gonna be a multiple episode video. So when I get this conduit bent, I will mark this at 10 degrees. The next video will be 22 and a half. The next video will be 30. The next video will be 45 and 60. And you guys will see on a four inch offset just how different it is and how you need to adjust for the different size, how much space you have. Do you need to make the offset quick as heck? You know, The more bends, the more resistance. I already said that again, I'm just reiterating. I know it sounds like a broken record, but you gotta remember this because if you're pulling con wire in the conduit, you, know, you gotta think about, okay, how many bends do I already have in here? Are they so close together? Do I need to make sure that I got you know, the strongest dude to pull the wire through because it's gonna be pretty rough? You know, Or if you put it on tens, well, it's pretty cut and dry, right? Let's go ahead and we'll mark this four inches, four inches. Let's go ahead and start. I love doing these videos, guys. I always say, do as I say, not as I do. I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna use a Sharpie for this demonstration. I do have a pencil. I'm gonna show you the pencil that I highly recommend. I've done a little video on it. Guys, it's amazing. It's this right here. This pencil, I've got like four of these units. And oh my gosh, I will leave a link down below. Once you use this, you're gonna be like, where was this all my life? It comes with, you know, the, obviously the black, the graphite color, red, yellow, and white, and they are, guys, I'm telling you that pencil's unbelievable. Anyway, we are gonna use Sharpie for this because I want you guys to visualize and see what I'm talking about. You know, people, they don't like seeing Sharpie on marks, and they're like, oh, you know, you're a rat, you know, you're a, you're a jack leg, you don't, you don't know how to do it. Well, you know what, whatever. Um, I do know what I'm doing, and if you guys choose to use Sharpie, well, that's on you and your journeyman and how you want it to look at the end of the day. Now, if this was in the wide open, I don't know that I would use Sharpie. I would definitely use pencil, but today we're going to use Sharpie. So, like I said, we are going to pull this down and put, maybe, and we're going to put a mark at two inches. So, I'm gonna make sure I stay in frame, so I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at the camera a few times. So we're gonna take and we're gonna put a mark at two. All right. Now we can do this one or two ways. You can go ahead and pull it down, right? To what did I say, 24? So it'd be 26, and you can mark your mark. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. So here's 26. I've got my tape measure. I don't have a wide enough lens unless I put it way back there, and then you won't be able to see me. I still have my tape measure hooked to the front. I put my my mark at two, and I'm gonna mark it at 26. Now, why did I do that? Right? Because if I move this tape measure down to two inches, like I did, see? It's marked at 24. See what I did there? And if you feel like that's too hard of math, which is fine, just do like I did. Put your tape measure on the two mark, mark on the two, and then you can See what I did here. It's 26. All right. I don't want to get too confusing on that. So 
that's our marks. Now, I don't usually draw a line all the way around unless I'm running really big conduit or I'm in a Chicago bender. But I'm gonna do it for this video. So all I'm gonna do is just put my two fingers like this and kind of just roll it around until it meets. So is the circle, is it level? No. Square, round, whatever you wanna call it, it's not. Does it serve a purpose? Absolutely. Now, we're gonna take his bender we're gonna cut this piece off, we're gonna slide this into the tin mark, and we're gonna see how good this thing works, because I am very curious. All right, so you take your little feet right there that they are protruding off, you put them in the bender, and you wanna obviously have it like this, right? Because that's the way the cone is gonna come in. I had it the other way the first time, which I already edited that out. All right, we're gonna put it in, and we are going to listen to the click. All right. There we go. Let's bend it and see what happens. Okay, no need to clean all this up because if you remember, if you guys are a lifelong Mountaineer Outdoors fan and been subscribed to my channel a long time, I've mentioned I'm making a new deck and I'm making um, a new fence. So all those tools are out because I'm doing that on a daily basis. And I decided to come in here to do this video. Now, this mark right here, guys, right there goes into your shoe at the arrow right here. Can you guys see that on the camera? So we are going to lay the mark, right? Right at the arrow. And this is pretty critical, so you wanna make sure that you kinda of get it as close to it as possible. All right, we'll put it on the ground and we will bend down to the top of there. So that right there, when it stops, it can't go no more. That is at your 10 mark. All right, what we're gonna do is we're going to remember, if you don't remember, I've got a video how to bend conduit that you really need to watch before you watch this. I'll link that up in the corner. So you wanna sight this pipe. Now we know that it's bent like this. So when we, this is how we bend it right here. So when we're done, we wanna take it and slide it, right? And the front end needs to flip the opposite way. So when we get to our mark, which is down here, we need to flip the pipe. So when it looks in, like in the bender, like I mentioned, I don't have a very um, wide angle lens today. Uh, you see how this is up now? When we bend it, it was down. So this is the way it was in the bender. I slid the pipe down like this, and then I flipped it over. So that's up. So we'll put this mark right at the arrow again. We're gonna to have to sight down the pipe. You need to watch that video, guys. I'm telling you how to bend conduit because it's very important. You wanna sight down, sight down as best as you can. You may get a dog leg, and I have a video for that too. All right, it looks to me like it's going good. So right now, this is what it looks like in the bender. And it looks like it's not dog legged. I'm going to pull it again down to the top of this little piece that is in this bender. And that should be four inches. Now we're gonna to have to measure this and see what it is. Sorry, let me, let me fix the tripod. Ah, I'm pretty impressed. Now, let me get my tape measure. What did I do with my tape measure? Let's see what it is. I already measured this right now. Can you guys see that? Let me do you one better. Can you guys believe that? I am really thoroughly impressed with that bender. I believe Klein has pretty nice. It's like maybe a 16th out, but geez, you can fudge that. I mean, right? Highly impressed with that. Oh my goodness. But do you see, do you see what I'm getting at? You see how all this real estate that you have here. So all this, you know, you have to decide when you're bending, do you have all this space to put this kind of an offset in here? Do you have the space or do you need, do you need, you know, to make the bender 
do you need to make the bend quick so you only have this much real estate? I mean, we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you. So, what I told you, we're gonna make this in several different videos because I think if I do not, I think it's gonna be really lengthy. Uh, I wanna write on here 10 degree, all right? Or I'll spell it out for you, D-E, G, R, E, E, all right? Just in case you didn't know what that little symbol was. And um, we'll bend this one, the next one, at 22 and a half. So let me go ahead and get the whiteboard out. I want to just write a couple things so you guys can kind of understand. We'll go over it. And maybe it'll make you understand a little bit more. But do you see the real estate that you have? Look, you have, I mean, you have to take up, you know, almost like 20, 20, shoot, probably more than that, probably like 28 inches. You'll need that much space. If you have it, that's great. If you don't, you know, then you got to decide, you know, if you had something you had to go over and it was right here and into your pipe stops right here, which we're going to go, we'll do a video on that. Trust me. I've got a, it's going to be a lot of conduit videos from now until probably the end of the year. Um, but anyway, we're going to, yeah, I'm going to show you. So let me get the whiteboard out and we'll talk more. I don't want to just keep rambling on, which I do that a lot anyway. So let me get the whiteboard out and I'll show you I'm talking about. All right, so if you guys are interested in this video here, I do have this video. It's out and ready to go. Pretty good if you want to know how to change fractions of decimals, decimals into fractions. So you can look at your tape measure and know where you are when you get, you know, your last uh, measurement is 0 0.625 or 5625, whatever. Anyway, good video. Definitely watch it. I'll link it down below also so you guys can watch that. 10 degrees. It's a multiple of six. So no matter what you do, if you're going to use a 10 degree bender or 10 degree bend, if you have a three inch offset, right? You do three times six. So you'll have 18 inches from mark to mark. I always come in two inches on my pipe. I always do. It's very seldom I'll come in on the very end. It's very seldom. But that's between the marks you'll have 18. So does that make sense? For ours, we did at four inches, right? And we times six times four is 24 between our marks. Now I hope that helps a little bit. Next week, you guys will see the what? 22 and a half degree bending. Now I'm going to tell you, I have never used the 22 and a half degrees except on um, three point saddles. There are people that use the 22 and a half degree, obviously for the reasons of your spacing, because the more degrees you go, the more this is going to suck down. So 22, it's going to be this much. At 30, it's going to be this much. At 45, it's going to be this much. Not really, but you see what I'm saying? It's going to be closing down. And you're going to have more room to go over things. And, you know, if you're in a tight spot, which we'll talk about as we go. I said I was going to put things up here. I haven't yet, but I will. Don't worry. We'll talk about that. So anyway, I hope that is some kind of clarity. Hope I didn't um, confuse you too much. So if you guys are interested in bending box offsets other than just you know, regular offsets. Well, right at the end of this video, there will be a video popping up. You guys can click on there and I will see you there. If you want to see what happens next, make sure you like and subscribe. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.